from the sector as shown here. So this would be my sector, this whole thing. And then once I pop that off, there it is, area of uh, segment. So I'm setting that up and leaving that aside so I have it for later. Right now, I already know from before that our area of circle is 452.4 units squared. So maybe I make a little note to myself over here that my area of the whole circle is 452 and 4 tenths units squared. I'll make a note of this. As you see, that's not specifically mentioned in the problem. But in the next section, we're going to talk about how to find the area of the segment. So it's going to start to become more and more important as things go on. So let's look at where that segment is. Or sector, I'm sorry. Let's look where the sector is. The segment's on the sector. So this is the sector, as we said before. As you can see when we go in, um, we make up a part of this whole circle when we pull out that sector. So I'm really just removing it. So I need to know just what this is. But I can't get any information on it on its own because I don't have anything to measure it with, uh, with when I'm just using it by itself. For instance, a sector made out of um, a dinner plate is going to be very different than if I have um, some sort of circular rug that I have in my room. The sector area is completely different in size. So I have to compare it to the original circle. So I'm going to go back and look at the original circle and see if I can think of something that I can do with it. Well. If I can figure out what portion of this whole circle is made up of this sector, that would be very convenient. Um, I'm given a little bit of extra information here. This symbol here stands for a right angle, which you should by this point know that equals 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to use that information compared to what I know about the measurement of the angles internal angles of the entire circle or the measured value of the entire circle in terms of the angle size make that comparison so if find out what part of this is uh, what part of the whole circle is this sector I can use that information and the area of the whole circle to find what I'm looking for so I'm going to f define my area of sector, I can find that by creating a proportion because I have two characters. I've got the whole circle and then I've got the sector, so that meets some of the criteria for a proportion. Then I have three pieces of information. I know what the measure of the central angle is. I know what the uh, combined sum of all internal angles of that circle are. And I also happen to know what the area of the circle is. So that's three parts with two characters. I'm looking for the fourth one. The two, three, four criteria works out here, so I'm going to set up a proportion. So I know that the central angle, being a right angle, is 90 degrees. So if you forgot that that's what that means, you should try to remember or practice or whatever. So this right angle is 90 degrees. The entire circle is 360. So really, this is sort of an advanced uh, part over the whole, and I'm going to set it over part over the whole. So if this is the whole circle, I'm going to try to write the word whole there, W-H-O-L-E, and I'm going to put part up here. So the part I'm looking for is actually the sector area. So I'm going to write sector there. Down here, the whole thing is actually the area of the circle. So I'm going to go up here and write 452.4 units squared. And look, I can cross, multiply, and divide now. We've discovered why we did this in another video, and I think I've talked about it in class a million times. But essentially, if you have to get rid of these two divisions, we're going to multiply and then multiply. So it's simple just to say that it's OK to cross, multiply, and divide. And I'm emotionally OK with that idea, so I'm just going to do it. 452.4. I've decided that the glare is going to keep my calculator near me f at first. 40. 1,716. So I'm going to write 40,000. 
1,716. I cross multiplied just now. That's what I was doing. Equals, if I cross multiply these two, 360 times the sector. Now, specifically for the assignment that you are working on today, um, we're going to put things in exact answers. We're not going to do the good old in terms of pi answer because I think it's more important that we learn how to do the process first and then we'll fiddle with in terms of pi at a later date. Or if your question on the ACT or on the assignment, the test is multiple choice, you can simply type in the answers as they're written. So if you, one of the answers is 49 pi, just type in 49 times pi in your calculator and find one of the answers that matches the answer that you got. That's a completely legitimate way to go about things. Um, otherwise, there's a longer way to do terms of pi, but we'll deal with that at a later time. It's more important that you get this process down first. So from here, I'm going to solve by dividing by 360. So I was smart and I left it up here this time. I'm learning. And I get 113.1. So the sector area is 113.1 units squared because these are both degrees this has to be a unit squared and so does this. So it's 113.1 or 113 and 1 tenth units squared. So that's the, how I find the area of this whole sector here. I'm going to go back and check in with my formula from before and see if I have an area of sector. Here it is right here. My area segment is area sector minus triangle situation. So what I'm going to do is if I had room I'd write it over here so I'm just going to rewrite it down here. I'm going to say that the area of sector is 113.1 units squared. And it's in convenience uh, blue, so that'll work out nice for all of us. But will be easy to discover. Now, we got now we have area of sector. But that's not what the question is asking for. It's asking for area of segment. So I'm going to start looking at the segment as two parts. I'm going to break it up right at the core. That flipped upside down. That's why the color is not so bright. Right here. As you remember, the segment itself is like the ice cream cone top, even though really this looks more like a diamond that some jeweler would have in their local paper ad. But we're going to say that this top part is a segment. But if I take that, but if I just want it by itself, I've got to remove this. This is a triangle, which is, you know, and hopefully you've seen one before. So if you remember, now we're going to have to go with our paper to find the area of that triangle. It shouldn't be too difficult to find the area of a triangle. If you think back a little bit about the area of a triangle, the first thing I always want to do when I'm looking for area is touch that right angle and I would suggest that you physically touch the right angle because it orients your brain that way I know where I am if I'm dropped in uh, from you know I'm time traveling or whatever which I guess maybe I'm apt to do if I get dropped in somewhere it helps if I know where I'm facing or what I'm facing because if some dinosaurs coming up behind me uh, it would be helpful if I was looking at it instead of just sort of staring off into space so in this case we're going to pop out of time travel and point to the right angle and touch it, that way I know where I am. If I can find that right angle, it's very easy to find both the base and the height. And that's important because the area of a triangle, our major uh, generic area formula is just base times height. And if you remember, I'm going to try to make this happen. The formula for the reason it's base times height is because we broke this up into parts. We would have that many squares inside. That's one unit square. So if this was a 12, this is also a 12 because it's a square. So I would cut this into 12 parts. And if I have 12 columns and 12 rows, that's 144 distinct one by one unit squares inside. We've done this a million times. I'm just trying to reiterate. But one of these triangles only represents half of that. So I need to do base times height right here 
I'll just divide by 2. By the way, note to self, on the next one I'll be using a marker for the area of a triangle and not this uh, colored pencil. I'm going to switch the colored pencil to area of segment or something. Anyway, I can go back to the old drawing that I have here. And by the way, I know these are laborious, which means they take forever. And I'm going to touch my right angle with my pencil to be hard to write anything down. I know that my base is the bottom part here. My radius is 12. This is also a radius, so that would make this 12 as well. You can't see it, I know, but I'm trying not to ruin this piece of paper in case I need it later. So my base is 12. My height is conveniently also 12. So I'm going to go back in, try to get out of the glare. 12 times 12 divided by 2. Um, 12 times 12 is 144. In case you didn't know, you should know. And then I'm going to divide by 2. I get 72. Very convenient. That would be also, by the way, in units squared. Um, I should say here that the calculator has been acting up a lot as far as what it does first, multiply or divide. It should just do left to right, but people have been having a lot of problems with uh, anything that has a square root and a division sign, so it's best if you go ahead and type in 12 times 12, like I did, and then do your dividing. I wouldn't do the longer version. It might work for this problem because there's no square root in it, but for some reason adding a square root makes this thing go insane, probably because it's a middle school calculator. Still works fine, so, but I would suggest you break it into two parts to get the most accurate answer possible. And when you're taking the ACT or working on one of the tests, it's kind of important to be as accurate as possible. Area triangle is 72 units squared. I'm going to go back to my formula of area of segment area of sector, the big one, minus area of triangle. So I'm going to put 72.0 units squared as my area of triangle. So I'm finally in the final step, and it's actually the easiest step. I've got my sector angle. I know what this is, so I'm going to remove it. And all I'll have left at that point is my segment. So I'm going to do that mathematically. I had the area of the whole sector, so that's right here. I'm going to take away or remove. Physically I'm going to remove it, but I'm taking it away. That's why subtraction is called take away, because it physically, it, in a physical sense, it means you're literally taking it away. So I'm going to take away this, and it's going to leave me with this. So all I have to do is go in and it's 113.1 1, minus 72. Hit enter. And my final area is 41.1. .1. If I can find my green marker, I'll put that there. Units squared. So it's a pretty long problem. I, I, you know, I'm totally with you on the idea that it might be even too long, but you know, it's what you have to do, so it's just what it is. So if I were to set this up for myself, the first thing I would do is think about what the picture looks like in my head. I might even draw a picture or whatever you've got to do. I'll think of the components being that there's a circle. So maybe if I have my piece of paper next time, uh, the first thing I'll think about is I've got to worry about the area of a circle. Uh, then maybe I'll move on to the area of the sector. I might not need this much now that I think about it. Area circle, area sector. Then I'll have to worry about the area of the triangle. And I broke my color coordination earlier. That's not good. And then finally at the bottom, I can find area of the segment. For some reason, I thought I needed the little box. I suppose I don't. Oh, the little box we're going to keep because on the next problem, the triangle becomes a significant issue. So, uh, But for a 90 degree angle in the middle, that's all you've got to do. Find area of a circle, find area of the whole sector, 
pop it in parts, find the area of the triangle, take away that area of the triangle, and then find the segment. Unfortunately, we have that nice 90 degree angle in my triangle, the one half base times height thing becomes very simple because the radius and the radius is both the base and the height. So you just do base and height times half, or what I like much more is base times height divided by two. So that's it for that one. Um, I'm going to try to stop this video and make two more. So stay uh, if you're interested in seeing the other ones, which have much more complicated middle sections. Please watch those videos. Thanks.